many people were hearing about the war in Ukraine, some men and some women went to volunteer to participate in the war. It's been really horrible over there. It's been a hard life there. But people have volunteered to go and become social, soldiers to help in the Ukraine. You know, we feel more comfortable here, so we stay here. The soldiers who leave to go, they're committed to help in the war efforts. We see how this is very separate, what happens here and what's happening there. So in World War II, the government told, actually had a draft, where the men would have to go and fight. They had to dedicate themselves, focus on the war efforts, and try not to be concerned about families, their businesses, their jobs, their relatives or their home. They had to put all of that aside and go to war. The wife and the children, they were left behind. They did have each other and they helped each other, but their lives were very separate. And I'm gonna show you a comparison between a Christian, what their life is like, and what a Christian life is like. They're both very different. Oh, a civilian and Christian battlefield. Okay, battlefield Christian. One who's gone off to war. And a civilian Christian who stays. They may have their own life you know, go take care of their kids, participate in their kids' activities, have their own businesses. That is what we're calling civilian Christian, just a normal life. Staying in your hometown, knowing your neighbors, that type of Christian. But a battlefield Christian is very different. One who might go off and feel alone. Listening to what the officer is telling them, what they're goal is and what they are to do to stand to fight and win the war. Civilian is different. They have goals for the future and life is probably a little quite easier than the battlefield. But these are also ap applicable to types of Christians as well. 2 Timothy 2.4 it was a letter that Paul had written to a young pastor named Timothy. Paul had let him know, you need to continue to preach. You are like a soldier. Soldiers don't get tied up, involved in the affairs of civilian life. Why? Because as a soldier, then you cannot please the officer who enlisted you or enlisted them, which means telling them where to go in different parts of war. The soldier cannot listen to an officer if they are tied or involved in a normal civilian life. And I'll like, come back to this and explain more later. So this is a story that took place during World War II. This woman in this picture is, all, is the lady named Mildred Gilliers. She was arrested in 1946. She was arrested and she was the first woman in history, or American history, who was accused of being a spy for another country. So 
So first, she was born here in America. She knew English. And she studied German, the German language. That's a sign of Germany. So they studied, she studied Germany, German, I'm sorry. And then she moved to Germany. She fell in love with a man there in Germany and got married and stayed. And then World War II broke out. The Nazis knew who she was and asked her if she would be willing to be a spy. And she agreed. And on the radio, she would listen So when the soldiers would go off to war, war, she would have a calm, soothing voice across the radio. It says, throw down those old guns and toddle off home. Means like, you know, like a baby. When a baby walks, they toddle. So toddle off home. She was part of the propaganda. So the American soldiers would heard her talking on the radio. She was giving them propaganda, trying to get them to um, give up and go home instead of stay strong and fight. So when the American soldiers would hear her voice, they would think of their home. They became homesick. They wanted to go. They wanted to escape. Instead of staying strong, they would think about their parents, their family, things that, who they missed. And then she exclaimed, as you soldiers, have girlfriends you've left. Suppose if you boys happen to get mutilated by warfare, lose a leg, lose a limb, and arrived home, you're not fully together, not in one piece because of a loss of a limb. Meaning your girlfriend will probably leave you. Some of them got married before they left, and then if they were to come home, they would think, oh, I don't want to take care of you, and divorce. So these men would think about these thoughts and wanted to give up and go home. Her show was called Home Sweet Home or sweet home sweet. You know, they would over the radio make sounds or have sounds such as a fireplace that you would hear the embers. Um, it would be things in the background that would make you think of home. And it would cause the soldiers to become mentally weak. They would want to go back home. What she was saying wasn't quite dangerous. You know, she wasn't warning them that the Germans would kill them and that you needed to go home. She wasn't warning them of danger. She was just a very smooth talker, almost like you would be listening to your grandmother. That was her propaganda. So in 1946, she was arrested and put in prison for 12 years here in America.
So why am I bringing this up? We Christians are involved in the affairs of civilian life. You know, we plan our families, we plan vacations, we work, we do have goals. Yeah, and those things are nice, and those are wonderful. If I'm not sitting there saying that we cannot save money, go on vacations, invest, and buy a house. That's not what I'm saying that we as Christians cannot do. We as Christians can enjoy what God has given us, his provisions. We have a good job, which gives us the ability to earn money. Maybe going on vacation, traveling with your family, visiting your relatives. All of that is fine. <coughs> you can plan a fun trip. Going to see Mickey Mouse in Florida. That's fine. But the point is, soldiers don't get tied up. So let's look at another scripture verse. It's really from almost the same Greek word, tangled up. And when people escape from the wickedness, knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then get tangled up, And enslaved by sin again, they are worse than they were before. Tangled up, this word, tangled up. <coughs> what is the definition of tangled up? What does it mean? It's a Greek word. <coughs> to weave in or to entwine. It means to like knitting, to come together, to weave in or entwine. Like a basket that's woven together, or fabric, or your hair when you braid it. That's the same idea of entangle or entwine. Don't get entangled, meaning hard to let go of. Don't become so enmeshed. Christians can go and enjoy things. Work, visiting family trips, but don't get so involved in that or in that life that you stay there. You know, hearing and deaf people, they all stay home. They're comfortable. They're kind of entangled or <laughs> tangled in or entrenched there. They're not willing to get out to do things, even though they know the Lord wants them to do something. They're enmeshed. That's what we mean by tangled or tangled up. You know... Not a strong, don't make it a stronghold. Me and my wife like this movie. It's a very old movie. I don't know, maybe y'all have seen this, Remains of the Day. His name is Anthony Hopkins, is the actor's name. But it's interesting. He is acting as a butler in this movie. You know, butler means the person, a male server. You know, he has the towel over his arm and he serves. He tends to work for wealthy people. Like a busboy, no. no. This is more of a professional role. It's a butler, a person who serves. That's their job.
he is committed to service. That's his profession. There are other people who are under the butler, but this is his work. His attitude, his speech, all remains the same. He is focused on his work. His father became a butler, and he was under the sun. The father had a lot of experience as a butler, but came to work under his son, And he became sick. But there was a political meeting that came. And he was very busy. His small L lord meant the person who owned the house had the wealth. And he would serve them. That was his job. He was a butler, and he had been busy all day for that meeting. And his father passed away that day. He had been so focused on serving others that he did not pay attention to his father. He had put others first instead of what was going on within his own family. So she, the lady in the movie, felt for him. Happened, and she happened to see him reading in, in his own room, and she asked, what is the book you have? And he was not wanting to really share. But she was curious as to what the book was about. I want to see what you're reading, is what she would say. And he would say no. So she was trying to peel his fingers away from the book to open it, to see what the book was. It wasn't a sexual book or a romantic, oh, it was a romantic story. So you like romance, she asked. He said, no, I read it so I can learn the vocabulary for my own education. He wanted to have the proper words and speak the proper words. And the lady was somewhat shocked, but he stayed and he served. And he did have a part of his life where he had enjoyment, but when it came time, he would focus in on his job and serve. It's just like going off to war. You can't be so entrenched in your own life that you disregard what God is calling you to do. You have to be able to break away and focus in. That's the same here. You know, boys, girls, men, women have things that we are to do as a soldier. Some are small, some are big, but together We all come together to work. So he was always prepared and focused on his job as a butler. Oh, I think there was another point I was going to make. So he was driving a car. He was going to a place, and the people said, oh, you found that they found out that he worked for the rich family. It was during World War II. 
It was a German family. He didn't want to talk about the family that he worked for. He was very loyal, loyal to them. He was not involved in the negative talk. He would not participate. He would go back to work and serve. Loyal means like always supportive. Regardless of whether the world hates you or hates them, it's just like when our service to Jesus. We're loyal to Jesus regardless if the world hates him and he will they will hate us. Soldiers don't get tied up or entangled. So this is a bag that's been tied. Reminds me of when I go to Panera Bread and pick up the bread and the cookies. Every Saturday we go over there to pick it up. And we put it in, they put it in bags to give to us and then we repackage and then we um, distribute it. One thing I don't like is when I go to Panera and I pick up a lot of bags there sometimes and then I bring them home and I open it, it's hard. Why is it hard? Because it is so tied, so tight. The workers have tied that bag so hard. And I've been trying not to, I'm trying to open it. And sometimes I have to use a knife to get underneath the knot. You know, and sometimes it's hard to open it. It's the same idea about not getting tied up or entangled. Where it's hard for you to let go. A loose tie? Yes, that's fine. It's easy to let go. Easy to open. It's easy to remove yourself and go. Go and serve where God has called you. You know, I live in a house. The church owns the house. And you see the house is nice, roomy. You know, it has carpet, a carport. It doesn't, you know, when it rains, I can go easily in and out of the house. And the church pays for some bills. We don't think about the electricity. We don't think about, you know, picking who paying who picks up the trash. The church helps with that. And that's really, really nice. You know, and it's easy to get to church. You know, and sometimes I forget something and I can run back real quickly and bring it. It's easy. And I'm thankful and grateful to the church. And so it helps me do a lot for the Lord. But what scares me? If I become entrenched or entangled. I like the idea that the church is providing. You know, I don't have to worry about it. It's easy. It's nice. And also if something breaks... You know, refrigerator breaks. The church replaces it. And they'll give, and that's happened before where they've replaced an appliance. The roof had a leak. And the church put a new roof on the house. But what still scares me is me getting entrenched, wanting to stay. What is it? I'm just saying this is an example. What if 
another church asked me to become the pastor there. I said, it's just an idea. Please don't think it's true. But, you know, instead of going, as I should, I feel very comfortable, entrenched here. I need to know that, I need to know what God's will is for me and leave. But maybe I'll decide not to because I'm entren entrenched or used to the civilian side of life. You know, I need to follow what God is willing. I need to be willing to let go and not be entangled. One of the top reasons both hearing and deaf pastors quit and resign, even though their health is good, they're not old, but they resign or quit is because they get involved in sin. They get involved in the wrong kind of a romantic relationship. They quit because they become agnostic or they're just tired of the fight. They want an easy life or they covet something. Maybe they want to go back to another job that seems to be much easier. So they quit being a pastor and it's quite sad. But the main reason they quit is sin. So if we remain motivated and love the Lord and in service, but we let sin enter our life, it takes over. It causes us to stray, be self-centered, think of only ourselves, the things we want. Like recently I was explaining about the radio, the lady on the radio, you know, making people get off focus, make them want to go home and make them homesick. It's sin. We have to be very careful with that. So here's the scripture to help us. It says, if you keep yourself pure, meaning in relationship with God, not enter, letting sin enter your life, of course we're going to fall but, and we repent and go back into communion. But if we stay in communion, you will be special utensils for honorable use, whether it's a small or large. God will use you. He will use you to honor him. And your life will be clean and you will be ready, notice ready, for the master to use you for every good work. So if you live in a house, you own a house, that's fine. You have a job, that's fine. You have goals. You have a dream. But don't let sin enter your life. Don't let sin take over your heart and your mind and get you distracted. It's easy to get entangled. And it's important that we stay in relationship with God. So this is an example. So here's waters further down. But it's warning here that there's deep water. In quicksand, meaning you know, have you ever seen where you just start to keep dropping into the sand and you can't get out? It's called quicksand. So, so that's the same idea as we as Christians have to avoid sin becoming entrenched into it. It's like quicksand. Sand, a sin can be like that. Where your goals, your thoughts, are wanting something for yourself. 
for your own desires. You give up on what God wants because you become self-focused. And sin can become like quicksand. And it's hard to remove yourself or get yourself out. So avoid sin. It's like avoiding quicksand. So back to this battlefield Christian, we should be that. We should be ready, like, you know, Army Reserves. You stay in your civilian life as a reserve, and then if you get called, you're easy to go. Be ready for the battlefield. That's what we should be. Some people will say, I'm old. I'll let the next generation take the lead. You know, I'm handing it over. I'm going to stay home. I'm retired. I'm done. Even though their health is good. But they decide, oh, it's my time to relax. Take it easy. Stay at home. And enjoy. And not be involved in the community. The excuse is, I'm handing it over. No, you should always remain involved. I remember a man coming to me and he said, do you think those who become old should stay home? Does the Bible have that where we can stay home? No, the Bible doesn't say anything about old people retiring or getting out. You know, that it's my turn to have my life. No, the Bible doesn't say that. So I gave them two names of two people in the Bible who were old, Joshua and Caleb. Both of them, when they arrived in Cana, which is also known as the Promised Land, after they wandered the, the desert for 40 years, they remained faithful. All of those others who was with Joshua and Caleb from the beginning, from year one to year 40, Joshua and Caleb were the only two to enter into Canaan. They were ready. They were 80 years old when they were ready to go into Canaan. There's a scripture verse that speaks of their age. Maybe some of you would think, oh, my health is deteriorating, I need to stay home. There's nothing I can really do. You know, you remember the woman named Anna? The one who came and saw Jesus? She prayed in the temple. She stayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Her husband had died many years ago, and she stayed in the temple and prayed. You can pray. That's part of service. You know, leave it better. You know, there was different events or different things you could be involved in. But here at the church, they had a prayer group praying. And that was part of their service. Their soldiers. They were praying. Secondly, you can give money to support different things such as missions, the church. Josh and Caleb remain faithful in service regardless of their age. So, battlefield and civilian Christian, what's the right kind of Christian? We should be the battlefield Christian, not the civilian Christian. We should be very careful not to get drawn in, enslaved, because we'll never find satisfaction in that and focusing on ourselves. We'll find ourselves restless, not satisfied, continuing to look for purpose. Why are we here? But when you serve the Lord, you receive such blessing. It is far better than what the world will offer. House, money, investments, 
riches, but you will never be satisfied when you're entrenched. And that is true. So I challenge us, civilian or battlefield, which Christian? So Father, we know that sometimes we're very blind. We're not watching where we're going because we're not really listening. We're not remaining in your word, focusing in on the promises that you've given us. But we've become blind by sin, self-centeredness. So Lord, we pray that that will not happen to us. That we're just partly a civilian Christian and that we're ready for battle. In Jesus' name, amen.